flow. Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to do a quick video discussing fasted cardio um, and outline the current research and basically where everything stands on whether we should do cardio fasted or whether we should eat before training. Uh, so first I want to look at why it is that people think we should do fasted cardio to begin with. Uh, what's the whole rationale behind it? And basically this idea comes from the notion that overnight we'll deplete our body's glycogen and so then when we wake up, if we don't eat, we'll preferentially use our body's fat stores as energy rather than the food that we would have ate if we were to do it fed. Now this fact has actually been upheld by a number of studies which have shown that the combination of lower insulin um, decreased glycogen, uh, increased cortisol, and increased epinephrine allow for greater fat oxidation when cardio is performed fasted. But the real question is, can we corroborate these results with long-term chronic studies? So, does acute increases in fat oxidation during the cardio session itself allow for greater fat loss over time? Now, in his 2011 review, Brad Schoenfeld noted that it's short-sighted to look at how much fat is burned during a cardio session. Fat burning must be considered over the course of days and not on an hour-to-hour -hour basis. So if we broaden our scope in this way, we'll find that many studies find that fed cardio actually results in a higher proportion of fat metabolism compared to fasted cardio. And it is worth noting here that Trebelsi in 2012 found that the fasted group had superior fat loss even though weight loss was the same. But it's important to note that in analyzing this study, uh, the subjects were in Ramadan. And so the group that ate in the morning simply just got to have an extra meal. So their caloric intake was 600 calories higher every day than the, fed, or than the fasted group. So it would make sense why the fasted group would have greater fat loss uh, over the course of the study. And another recent study by Iwayama et al. found that uh, fat oxidation both during and after the fasted cardio was superior to the fed cardio, but they also found no significant differences in body weight or body fat. So this study of course had its own limitations, uh, one of which was the fact that we need to consider that when we simply just measure fat oxidation, what proportion of this fat is coming from intramuscular triglyceride, it might not necessarily speak to uh, the breakdown of adipose tissue over time. So in terms of the actual long-term 24-hour uh, or even longer-term use of fat, it seems that most of the studies uh, are either in favor of um, performing cardio fed or they don't really have a position and there was no significant difference. And the ones that did show a significant difference, again, there are a few limitations there in some cases, like the Trebelsi one, some pretty big ones. Now, more recently, Alan Aragon and some others published a study that found no significant differences in weight loss or fat mass losses in, I think it was 20 young, healthy women. Now, this spurred on a lot of discussion online uh, but I think that the main takeaway here was basically that we now have further support for the notion that fasted cardio really offers no additional benefit to fed cardio. So now let's look at a few criticisms from the other side. So from the people who say that you should never do fasted cardio uh, no matter what and that it's going to be detrimental to your gains. And basically it's these people who say that fasted cardio results in muscle loss. So yes, it's true that you're not going to be burning the glycogen that you depleted after your overnight fast, but now you're going to be burning amino acids from your muscle. Um, and 
This isn't really agreed upon amongst the researchers either. Uh, for example, Lemon and Mullen found that fasted cardio did result in greater nitrogen losses, um, while Trebelsi found no significant difference in lean mass between the fasted and the fed subjects. And in looking at the Lemon and Mullen study, we need to consider where that nitrogen is coming from. It isn't clear that it actually came from muscle itself. And we also need to question whether acute increases in nitrogen loss during a training session will actually um, extrapolate to increases in muscle loss over time. And this is especially the case when you consider the fact that most people who would even be doing fasted cardio are on typically very high protein diets and typically very well structured resistance training programs. So a second criticism that you'll frequently hear from the anti-fasted cardio crowd is that it results in decreased performance or basically you can't uh, push yourself as hard or you won't push yourself as hard if you don't have any food in your system. And while this does make intuitive sense, again the literature is equivocal on this matter. Um, it appears to be the case that for submaximal exercise, fed or fasted conditions might just have no bearing on physical performance at all. And I think that this is an instance of individual variability, where you'll hear some people say things like, doing cardio fasted first thing in the morning sort of wakes me up and it energizes me for the rest of the day, while other people really can't do anything until they've had their breakfast. So before I conclude, I will mention that in the Stubborn Fat Solution uh, by Lyle McDonald, um, he presents a specific case where fasted cardio might actually be useful. And he doesn't really reference any of the controlled trials that I've mentioned already in this video, but what he does do is he provides a mechanistic basis for doing fasted cardio um, in that it may help us target uh, a specific type of fat that he refers to as stubborn fat, which is basically that last bit of fat that's left to go at the tail end of a cut. Um, so the last little bit to come off your glutes or your lower abs or whatever. And he basically says that this type of fat is so stubborn because of the preponderance of alpha-2 receptors on that specific type of fat that lead to issues with fat mobilization and blood flow, actually getting the fat you know, away from that specific area. Um, and he thinks that fasted cardio inhibits these alpha-2 receptors and therefore sort of solves these problems with mobilization and utilization. So to me, it seems as though we're in a place to conclude that fasted cardio should just be regarded as another tool in the toolbox. It isn't something that should be avoided and quarantined at all cases, or in all cases. Um, but neither is it something that we should be encouraged or forced into using. Um, I think that ultimately it comes down to a matter of personal preference and what it is that you enjoy and what it is that is going to allow you to be more adherent with the protocol over the long term. Alright guys, so that's all I have to say on that. I hope that this video was informative and thank you for watching.